arrogance of America cannot go unanswered, my general. We must test our devotion to freedom's war and keep Turkey from their imperialist grasp. May our aim be true as we knock their superior air force from the skies. This is Echo 6. Go to grid 781 and give us a sit rep. Roger that, Echo 6. Iron Hand inbound. Echo 6, I've got a lock in a DLA vehicle. Aircraft spotted. I'm taking them out. Quickly, quickly! Be careful! Watch out! Watch hurry, out! Hurry, hurry, hurry! The American airbase to the west is causing trouble for us. I will obey. Destroy it, I and the Americans will be crippled. I'm hungry. We will show the Americans they do not belong in these lands. I will building work. cannot fit there. Oh, welcome back, General. We've got another mission that has quite a bit of build-up involved in it. Probably the first for the GLA, and something you need to sort of pay attention to, especially on Brutal Difficulty. You see, we saw a lot of raptors involved in the cutscene. We've also seen a lot of raptors in previous missions, whether we're the GLA or otherwise. The problem is, is that the US actually has a different kind of multi-role fighter. One that becomes far more deadly than a regular raptor. You see, even though the GLA stinger sites can detect things, you can't really detect what's in the air and far away. So you have to pay attention to that. They also have a lot of helicopters and, again, is something that you need to pay attention to. It's an interesting mission, albeit, paradoxically, some one that's still kind of boring. This isn't to say that I dislike this mission, it's just that you have to solve it in a very specific way. You gotta build a lot of anti-air. You get a few ground defenses, a few scorpion tanks, you know, make sure that they don't come in with crusader tanks and so on and, and take you out. Destroy the American. But essentially you're focusing on the anti-air forces of the mission. Scorpion rocket installed, sir. Bring up support troops. Our way is through. Prepare to fight. No cost is too great. We will cleanse them we from will our land. Oppressed. Nothing will stop us. We've located the source of supplies. Don't our homes are in peril. We have found that oil, Jerry. I'm just a peasant. A warrior. It's also very important to have a lot of workers. Not specifically to gain a lot of money real quick. It's more because you want desperately have something in the way in order to repair your stinger sites because they won't repair automatically. A warrior has fallen. Also, the Chinese are on this map and I don't really know why. Essentially, the goal I have is to uh, build up enough units that I can safely leave my base, build enough stinger sites that after I've left my base I have something to defend it with, and then use those units to essentially push through to the bottom left of the map, grab the supplies there, take up the Chinese or whatever, and eventually creep my way into the base. 
Sadly, because it's brutal difficulty, you kind of need to prepare for quite a bit. Hence the excessive number of units I'm using. It's also quite important to use rebels effectively. The AI doesn't always know what to do with them, more specifically because they can be spawned in very awkward positions. There's going to be an upgrade that I believe we won't see till zero hour, which makes them even more powerful. But again, you don't see it for a while. Don't get on my bad side. Also, if I remember correctly, and for those who are simply listening in, the uh, the rebels you can spawn off map are 8, 16, and 24 in number, I believe. Uh, actually, I could have that wrong. It could be uh, it could be 6, 12, 18. You know what? Just check the thread. I'll have the numbers there. <laughs> what? Huh? Four on the floor. I'll get there. I could bother with uh, tunnel networks. It might be a little what? smarter. Um, I do not have patience for this. If and when I get a worker get into the supply uh, the supply pile in the middle of the map, uh, but I'm not really under too much pressure, so. A warrior is falling. <laughs> Going. Quad <laughs> cannon, don't push me. Don't get on my bad side. Four on the floor. They will break and shatter. A warrior has Don't fallen. Don't get on my bad side. Punch the next thing that moves. What? Don't push me. Huh? In a similar way to what? how, uh, on the Chinese side of things, I'd mix Gatling cannons with bunkers, you kind of want to mix some sort of unit with stinger sights. Personally, I prefer quad cannons just because they're more fun to use, and I have to admit I probably prefer uh, that voice actor to most others on the GLA side. It's also just important because, well, when having to deal with something like helicopters or aircraft, it's nice to have that initial damage that the stingers provide, but the overall damage that quad cannons can do sometimes outweighs that. Not having to reload is kind of a big thing sometimes. Huh? Four on the floor. Don't get on my bad side. What? Having had restarted this mission like two, three times, I don't really want to try it again. It's crazy sometimes how much range some units have. For example, the rocket guys in the building on the top right of the screen can shoot all the way down uh, and take out quad cannons of mine. Similarly, the Patriot missile system at the top of the screen can also reach impressive distances. It's not game breaking, it's just you don't really expect some of the distances involved sometimes. Our will is strong. This actually might be the first time we've actually seen the U.S. Uh, income getter. Essentially, they're Chinooks. Well, I'll get more into it once we actually play as the uh, the U.S. 
Suffice to say, the Chinook is, yet again, a unique unit for how it performs and how it acts. And... Well, I don't really know how to rate it. It's nice. For whatever reason, garrison buildings count. I have to wonder if the AI, AI would just re-garrison a different building. But sadly, they didn't. <laughs> 